Silver's character has always been unstable. You know, looking back at Sonic 06, they clearly had some plans for him. That game revolves around him, just as Adventure 2 revolves around Shadow. But, uh, you know what happened. 06 was 06, and the first impressions matter, so everybody hated Silver. Right. And apparently, the fallout is so goddamn big, people still to this day use 06 to bash Silver, so every image they had of him goes down the shitter and is relegated to side content like Big, and oh my god, Silver is on the same level as Big? This is my foundation here? God damn it! Until they decided to do a serious... <clears throat> serious story. Of course, forces f him up too. What do you expect at this point even? Why are you here? You're from the future, that's that's your whole thing, right? There's literally no explanation for why you're in the present. Yeah, it is in the prologue comic, you dumbass! Bullshit. There's not a single mention of him being from the future in the whole game. The comic was one, clearly an afterthought, or two, a marketing gimmick. And also, I shouldn't have to consume outside media to get a maximum enjoyment. What you're doing here is called shitty writing. What? This was your first time dealing with a character, so you just wrote whatever the f you want? Was it too much for you to do some goddamn research for once? As I said, unstable. Okay, let's uh, clear the table and work with what we know. Starting with the basics. He's a time traveler who alters past events in order to save his ruined future. It's a great concept and it's really fun to mess around with. It's also really easy to mess up. For example, in Sonic Colors, he comes back because he read about Eggman's amusement park in his time. So, my guy literally time travels to visit a theme park. Alright, here we run into a problem similar to Knuckles. We have this character that we would like to use, but it doesn't make sense for them to not be in their respective locations. For Knuckles, it's Angel Island, and for Silver, it's his time. Now obviously, as I said, just like Knuckles, we don't need him to keep coming back every game. That'll spoil the character for us. But if we wanted to come back and have it make sense, I'd like to propose my own concept. No matter how many times Silver comes back to fix his time, it's always doomed. In some way or the other, something is always wrong. Let me elaborate. There are three main theories on time travel. A fixed timeline, a dynamic timeline, and a multiverse which is relevant. A fixed timeline is when the future is set in stone. You cannot change it by altering past events. A dynamic timeline is the opposite. Past events directly influence the future. Now, as I said in the doomed future, really creative name I know, the future is always in ruins, so it might sound like that I'm proposing a fixed timeline, but no, that's the thing. Each time, the future is f***ed in a different way. Say, for example, the future is Crisis City. If Silver goes back in time, alters some events, then comes back to Crisis City again, that would be pretty boring. No, he comes back to an alternate future that's equally as bad. The possibilities are quite endless. Now why am I doing this? Two reasons. Number one, it allows Silver to come back for future games. Because as cool as it is for him to go back in time and save his ruined future, it's a one-time thing. If he goes back to his time and assaults Sunshine and Rainbows, there would be no reason for him to come back. But if you want him to come back, we have to deal with paradoxes. And no one likes to deal with a paradox, we already had to. In Sonic Colors, we know Silver's future is safe. But the next time he comes back, he comes back to save his future from something that Eggman will do in Sonic Forces? What? Time doesn't work like that. If Eggman decides to do something, the future doesn't suddenly change like that. His decisions carry over to the future. By making Silver's future permanently fucked, we can take into account all the future events that will occur. And number two, keep his character fresh. Silver going back in time always prevents the thing he's trying to prevent, right? This not only solidifies him as an important part of the cast, but will also allow us to dive deeper into his character. It's simple. He always has something to deal with back home. Kinda like how episode Shadow took place before the game, episode Silver could take place after the game. You know, keep the whole Sonic 06 motif going, past, present, and future, you know what I'm saying, eh? But Al, you can't put him in that setting that'll ruin his character, you dumb fuck. I, I was getting to that. Frick. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. No! Silver's not a realist. He never was. He never will be. A realist is described as someone who accepts the situation as it is. Silver's whole premise revolves around him not accepting the situation and looking for a way to fix it. And there's a word for that. 
the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that the events will turn out for the best. That is the textbook definition of hope. He fights Iblis over and over and over again. He never succeeded. He goes back in time over and over again. He never saved the future. And he's not stopping because of it. The probability of success, the odds, he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't see them. Hope. Silver's greatest strength and his greatest flaw. Take the last story from Sonic 06 for example. Sonic is dead, time has collapsed, space has no meaning, Solaris is free, everything is f***ed. No! I won't give up! There has to be a way! If you say it exists in the past, present, and future, I'll destroy them all at once! Certainly. It might have been possible if he was still alive. When even the ultimate life form has lost all hope, Silver has not. Of course! Let's call him back with the power of the Chaos Emeralds! Focus your thoughts on using its power to perform this miracle. You can do it, Princess! I can? You were the vessel that was used to seal Iblis. You should be able to use the gem's power to rescue Sonic's soul. And ironic how over time, his catchphrase has become, it's no use, while in his eyes. It's yes use. Always. Hell yeah. The Sonic Wikia describes Silver as gullible, immature, insecure, short-tempered and bossy, brave, expressive, a sweetheart, and not being able to pick up on social cues. Let's tackle these one by one. The easy one is brave, obviously someone dealing with the shit he does daily would really be brave, so no problem there. As for short-tempered and bossy, I get what they're trying to say with short-tempered, but that's not really a good word to use. That falls under the expressive category, but bossy? I don't see that at all. Also, no. But, but my face. Okay, so, here's the scenario, right? Silver's been fighting this thing for months. Years, for all we know, right? And this guy suddenly, I don't know where, shows up. He's all like, psst, psst, Hey, kid. Hey, hey, kid, you want some Ibis Trigger? Hey, you got some Ibis Trigger? Yeah, I got some Ibis Trigger. To save the future? Yeah, to save the future, save kid. Save the future, save me yeah, the future. Save the future. I got you some, some Ibis Trigger, Ibis Sonic. Yeah. No shit he's gonna believe him. If there's even a small chance that this guy is right, Silver has to take it. He's desperate. Doesn't make him gullible like Knuckles. Although he is naive like him, but for completely different reasons. Silver is naive not only because he's not very good with people, but also as I said, he's hopeful. He sees the good in everyone, so the concept of someone being inherently evil is alien to him. Whereas Knuckles is naive because he's socially inept. He doesn't interact with anyone. Neither does Silver. Yeah, but that's not his choice though. Usually he doesn't have anyone to interact with. Knuckles is choosing to be alone and that's the main difference between these two. Knuckles is an introvert whereas Silver is an extrovert like Sonic. But instead of being cocky and cool, he's bubbly and expressive. That's actually one of the main reasons he's so popular. Between all these badass edge lords, there's this cinnamon row who just wants to chill. He sees the sky, he's like, yo this bro, that so shit's beautiful. fucking beautiful, baby. He sees the fucking desert, he's all like, I like sand. It's not coarse, and not rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. What? So, what I've talked about so far is the setting I want Silver to operate in. They will be, or would have been implemented in his own game, which I'm sure would have happened if 06 went well. Now, making a full ass video game is really difficult, and I'm not touching that here. That's an entire video in of itself. I'm just gonna talk about his abilities for a bit, because I think that's really important to his character as much as it is for the gameplay. And it's pretty simple, actually. His main thing is psychokinesis, which is really easy to work with. Using it, he can lift himself up and can fly really, really fast. He can also create energy beams, energy balls, any kind of projectile game manufacturer in his mind. Now, I'll make an adjustment here and say that his telekinesis is limited to his sight. He can't move, but he can't see. I think that'll stop him from becoming too overpowered. 
this will be really fun to mess around with in game. Maybe we can implement kind of like a skill tree or something. Again, I'm not getting into the game design, that's another topic. As for weaknesses, there's the obvious one. He has to conserve his energy. If he goes past his limit, he loses focus, his head starts to hurt, or he gets a nosebleed. Of course, he can train himself and become more powerful, but he still has to be careful how much he pushes himself. Something else that I decided to implement is this. Naturally, if someone uses their mind to fight off enemies, they don't give their muscles any workout. So, when shit gets physical... Yeah. Another ability that gets overlooked is that he can kinda just... Time travel? I know we kinda accept it at this point, but how? In Sonic 06, two Chaos users had to Chaos Control at the exact same time to time travel. It barely made sense then, now we can just do it alone? That's way too overpowered. Time travel on command is a bad idea. Luckily, I have another solution. Y'all remember the time slams? What if we brought them back? Na -na -na -na. They would act as collectibles for silver, similar to how the Chaos Emeralds do for Sonic. We can still have the Emeralds, but the stones will be Silver's main MacGuffin. This is how they'll work. In order to time travel, Silver has to collect them all. They would give him the ability to make two time portals. One for going in, and one for coming back. Every time he does that, the stones will reset, and he has to collect them all over again. This will solve the problem of Silver being able to time travel on command, and it could act as a plot device for whenever he comes back home. Maybe someone else has the stones and is trying to stop them from getting into the wrong hands. But he could act as some sort of a time guardian. And I'm also gonna tweak them a bit, instead of 7 there are 6 time stones and the colors are a bit different to differentiate them from the Chaos Emeralds. Alright, that's about does it for his powers for now, let's focus on the direction. In the Doom Future concept, I said this. Each time, the future is fucked in a different way. That might lead you to believe that the future is always a post-apocalyptic scenario like Crisis City. Well, that's not exactly true. Sure, we could have timelines where the whole world turned into a desert, or it sank, but the problem with those is that they get old real quick. Maybe the future actually looks good on the surface, but the more he lives there, the more sinister things appear. Maybe Sonic went evil at some point, or a war happened, or maybe... Maybe a new villain was born. Silver's own nemesis. A villain which he helped create. You fuck around with time, time fucks you back. To discover what happened, it seems we must see what took place ten years ago. Follow me if you want the truth. This whole scene really stands out for me, not only because, but I think it lays the foundation of some beautiful we can work towards for Silver and for Shadow. Because here's the thing. If there's one thing we know about Shadow is that he works alone. He trusts like two whole people and that's about it. So the fact that he takes this kid who he just met under his wings shows the effect he had on him. Huh? You induced chaos control. I won't let anyone get in my way. I'll change the past and save the world. Mephilus isn't trying to help you create a better future. He's trying to eliminate the past. After their trip to the past, Silver is calmer. His eyes are more open. He becomes more mature. That is what I want from these two. A student-mentor relationship. And yes, Shadow does act as the mentor, but that doesn't leave Silver behind. Silver learns a lot from Shadow, and for some reason, Shadow doesn't mind having him around and helping him with his insecurities. And hey, if we really wanted to, we can make it work with Silver's situation. Shadow is immortal, right? So maybe in a couple of possible timelines, he's still kicking around. And that leads to them having their own conflicts. How far is Silver willing to go to save the future? Is it even morally right for him to change the future by any means necessary? How many times is Silver gonna try and play God before Shadow steps in? These are the stories we can explore by implementing a time traveler and an immortal being as his mentor. 
there's really nothing deep about it. Some people just click. We don't know what Silver went through as a kid. It sucked. That's all we know and it's all we need. He grew up in this horrifying wasteland with almost no one by his side. But that didn't stop him from trying to make things better. His ability to always look for a solution and keep his head up is incredible. Yes, he makes mistakes along the way, but that doesn't stop him from learning from them and coming out on top. He was able to make something good out of a bad situation. And Shadow admires that. It's not that much different. So when he has the opportunity to help someone who was lost and confused just like he once was, he'll take it. And he'll stop them from going down the path that he once did. They teach each other an important lesson. Keep moving forward.